SMT Nation, we back. Nation, this is going to be a quick video. It's not going to take much for me to explain what's going on here. It's actually an update to a previous video. I didn't have all the information I needed, and now I think I have it, and I want to make sure we get some clarity out to the nation. All right, so I shared this picture with you guys in a previous video, and it's a T-Mobile tower site that's being upgraded in Houston. And what you guys will see here is you have this N41 5G UC antenna, uh, which is... I don't know if you guys can can tell it's the one in the middle all right that one's n41 so that's not going anywhere these other ones they're not going anywhere either the ones to the left but the two to the right is an interesting situation the one that's at the bottom on the right that smaller one that one has been up there the one above it is a new installation and the cool thing about this antenna and this was not uh something we knew previously it's actually a two-in-one uh frequency solution for T-Mobile. It's going to accomplish the 3.7 C-band and also the 3.45 DOD. So this was something that Mike Sievert talked about, you know, last week at the UBS conference in regards to the network and the upgrade process. This is two frequencies that T-Mobile has across many larger markets in the country to bolster their 5G UC network. But we were of the understanding that they were waiting to deploy uh, new antennas and radios until they had a solution that was all in one for the three gigahertz So we were assuming that just based on this picture that they were just putting up a you know C-band and, and DOD frequencies separately So that's what we thought these two antennas and radios were on the right Turns out that this one's probably going to be decommissioned at the bottom. It probably doesn't need to be there Or if they do leave it there and operational The one above it can actually accomplish both DOD and C-band, and that's a Nokia radio and antenna. So that's really interesting. We assumed wrongly, uh, I assumed wrongly, uh, that this was going to be an Ericsson solution to get a 2-in-1, 3.7, 3.45. That's not the case. It looks like it's going to be a Nokia for this solution. I didn't even know that uh, T-Mobile is using uh, Nokia in Texas, and I'm not sure if it's all cities or some markets, but uh, that appears to be the case. Uh, that is a you know, two and one, three gigahertz solution for T-Mobile from Nokia, which kind of also helps me kind of understand some clarity as to why, you know, T-Mobile might want to continue operating, building their mobile network with both vendors, Ericsson and Nokia. I did predict that they would probably choose one and go ORAN, just kind of like what AT&T did. Uh, but it, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm not so sure about that now after seeing something like this. And this could be temporary. You know, this could always be kind of like a, in, in the betas, in the testing stages of things, and we'll get more information and figure some things out in the future. Uh, but I'm seeing some more T-Mobile upgrades ongoing and some keep sites from Sprint in my market, and I'm not seeing anything DoD or C-band related. So I can't comment or speculate on what they're doing here, but this is what's happening in Houston, and I'm excited to see if maybe someone can get out to these locations, maybe do some testing, see how the configurations are with the Samsung Galaxy phones, see how things are going with the iPhone, how many carriers of 5G can aggregate and combine and stuff like that. We'll see. Uh, but just wanted to give you guys that clarity and that update and a follow-up uh, because we didn't have all the information we needed. But um, now I think we're good and we're golden and we'll look for a possible Ericsson solution for T-Mobile very soon. All right, but uh, tell me what you guys think of all this. Sound off in the comment section below. Feel the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.